Nishat Rahimov might lose a medal, Lu Zhashun might gain a medal, and Robu Stanky Leg Marin is continuing to climb the rankings. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House news show, the only weightlifting news show in the world. <sighs> I'm sure you guys have all seen from the thumbnail, from the title, from from news articles on weightliftinghouse.com. There is a lot of news to get into with regards to Nijat Rahimov and the pop and what that might mean for other athletes. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the remaining speakers at the inaugural Coaches Only Conference, February 27th to 28th. So joining Dr. Sergei Putsov, Dr. Quinn Hennett, Kate Nye and Spencer Arnold, we have Dr. Anna Swisher and Shyam Chavda. Now, both of these guys perform research for USA weightlifting and British weightlifting in order to impact and influence the way that the top level coaches train their athletes. They recently just published a fascinating biomechanics paper, and so they want to talk about how to advance our collective understanding of weightlifting and biomechanics with the goal of empowering coaches to develop quality weightlifters. Next, we have the Sean Waxman, who, of course, has been on the podcast many times. We've had incredible conversations with him. He has been a professional coach now for nearly a quarter of a century, uh, creating, I guess, one of the most iconic gyms in weightlifting ever, Waxman's Gym. He's developed numerous international and national medalists. He's a director on the board of USA Weightlifting and a USA Weightlifting Lead Instructor for Coaching Education. And he is going to be talking to you guys, to you coaches out there, about how to develop a program for a clean athlete and the considerations that you need to take that perhaps you're currently not taking in order to optimize the development of a clean lifter. Next, we have the ever so charismatic Justin Holly from Willpower Weightlifting. As a head coach at Willpower Weightlifting Club, Justin Holly has not only produced Welsh, British and Commonwealth record performances, but he's been able to cultivate possibly the most tight-knit, well-regarded team of weightlifters in the country. And so Justin is going to be talking about the, the secrets, the dynamics, I suppose, to building and maintaining such a strong team whilst getting the best out of all of his athletes. And then the, the fourth speaker, and I'm suddenly here in my room because I just recorded this podcast and I said on the podcast that I couldn't yet announce the fourth person because we hadn't sorted out the, the time slot that they were going to speak in. I get this email from the fourth speaker. We have Dr. Mike Isratel, who is one of the most interesting uh, researchers, really, I guess you could say, in the strength and conditioning world. He's been on the podcast a bunch of times. He's always provided us with such incredibly exciting, interesting information, cutting edge research. And so I am I'm truly thrilled to uh I'm truly thrilled to have him be a part of Coaches Only. So the title at the moment, well it's it's a working title. I won't reveal it yet. We're still trying to work out the exact details of what his talk is going to be. We're actually deciding on whether we're going to go down the nutrition route or kind of impacted to some extent by his, his current research in, in hypertrophy, perhaps a hypertrophy for weightlifting style talk. But I'll let you guys know that. So those are the speakers. Let's get into the drug news. Nijat Rahimov from Kazakhstan and Dimitri Kaptari from Romania have both been provisionally suspended from the sport. For those of you who don't know, Nijat Rahimov, the 2015 world champion, famously beat a bombed out Lu Zhaozhen, even attempted a world record 211, and then actually won the Olympic Games in 2016, beating Lu Zhaozhen, hitting 214 kilos in the clean and jerk, the most remarkable lift of the entire Olympic Games. And then we have Dimitri Kaptari from Romania, the 2017 European champion, used to compete for Moldova, now for Romania. Both of these athletes come from countries that are already really on the edge with regards to whether they're going to even be able to compete at the Olympics. And this might well be the, the straw that breaks the country's camel's back. So both of these athletes have not been accused of taking drugs per se. They've been accused of using urine substitutions. So some of you will remember that last year we spoke about several of WADA's latest investigations into weightlifting. One of these investigations was called Operation Arrow, the use of so-called doppelgangers who essentially provide urine in place of a doper. Operation Arrow has now actually run 
DNA analysis on over 59,000 samples, I think from between 2013 to the current day. And because they ran these DNA samples, they're able to find out from this fake urine, or at least urine of a doppelganger, that the urine that was handed in for Nijat Rahimov and Dmitry Kaptara are not actually from those two athletes. It's worth remembering as well that in 2013, Nijat Rahimov was actually suspended as well for two years for oxandrolone and dehydromethyl testosterone, which means that if he gets a second ban, we're just never going to see him compete again. Which, to be honest, seems totally reasonable at this point. So what is this actually going to do to results? Well, in 2015, Nizhat Rahimov won, but Lu Zhaozhen bombed out. So the person who is in second, who's now going to move up to first, if indeed Rahimov and Dmitry Kaptara are removed, will be Mohamed Ihab from Egypt. He will then get the gold medal. Currently in fourth place, but then likely moving up to third from Russia, will be Victor Getz. It's just kind of interesting to see that we remove the person in first and then Mohamed Ihab, who lives for a country that is currently banned for drug use, moves into second. And Victor Getz from Russia, another country that is banned for drug use, moves up into third. For the Olympics, it will mean that Nizhat Rahimov loses that gold medal, potentially, and Lu Zhaojun will move up into the first position, taking that gold medal, meaning that he will no longer have just one Olympic gold medal from 2012 but now two from 2016. This also means that should Liu compete in Tokyo 2021, which he is likely to do, should China say that they are removing Li Dai-Yin from their roster, essentially due to an injury or something similar, that he could then win a third Olympic gold medal, which would mean that he would be put in with a group of four other weightlifters. He'd become one of five to ever win three Olympic gold medals. If you know who the other four are, of course, leave them down below. And this honestly seems kind of fair with regards to Rahimov, to have already been popped once, and now, if this is the case for him to be popped twice, I think, for the final time, he really will have been taking the piss. As always, I'll keep you all up to date with anything that goes on with regards to this case over the coming weeks and months. Over to Taiwan, we have 96 kilo Chen Po Zhen, who just hit a, a fantastic training total, 175 in the snatch, 202 kilos in the clean and jerk, which, as far as I'm aware, is the most we've actually ever seen him hit in the clean and jerk. If you go back to the 2019 World Championships, he went 165, 193, and in the third period of the qualifying process for the Olympic Games, he had his best performance. He went 175, 200. So as far as I know, those are his official competition lifts. In an sort of in-house Taiwan competition, he did snatch 176, which I believe was a national record at the time. But 175, 202 is the most we've seen from him as a total so far in his career. And and he moves very fast and very well. South Korea's 17-year-old Park Hye Jeong just keeps going from strength to strength. Last week, I mentioned that she was lifting on a men's bar. This week, she hits 160 kilos for a block clean double. Again, on a men's bar, I don't know if this is to improve her grip strength. I don't know if this is to make it harder with the oscillation and then she'll get this added benefit once she moves back to the 15 kilo bar. I've never seen it done as a training technique for women other than just in using a 20 kilo bar for the back squat to aid with crippling oscillation. So again, I extend the question. If anyone knows why this is happening, please do let me know. Indonesia's Jeremy Lalanunga, the 67 kilo weightlifter, just hit 120 kilos for a power snatch plus full snatch and then a 135 kilo full snatch. Now, of course, the world record is 155 kilos, so this is 20 kilos below for his full. It's 35 for the power plus full. And yet I wanted to mention it, partly because I haven't spoken about Jeremy before in the podcast and I feel like you guys ought to check him out if you haven't yet, but also he does move really nicely. And as much as this podcast is specifically aimed at the best weightlifters in the world, it's worth pointing out people who move just as nicely as Jeremy Lalanruga does. From Armenia, the 2019 reigning world champion, the 89 kilo weight class Hakob McCritchin, which I'm just going to stop here and just say, if you've never spelt McCritchin, you, I don't think it's possible to spell it right first time without having looked it up. It's absolute, Every time I, I spell it, I can't believe where the T goes in McCritchian. It just M-K-R-T-C-H-Y-A-N. Anyway, 210 kilos clean and squat jerky. He's a squat jerker. 
um, which is equal to the most he's ever seen from him. At the European under-23s, he hit 210. He has tried more. He has cleaned it and missed the jerk. But this is a really exciting lift. At the Olympics, he'll be competing in the 96 kilo weight category because, of course, the 89 kilo class doesn't exist as an Olympic weight class. But he has competed at 96, which means that he's able to qualify his points up there. And so he actually sits in the top eight despite not really being known as a as a 96 kilo weightlifter. Robu Stanky Leg Marin is once again just so exciting and fun to watch. From Moldova, uh, he sent me a message saying that he wants to hit 160, 190. He actually watches the show, which is kind of cool. And he saw himself last week, so he messaged me. He says, I want to hit 160, 190 at the European Championships. That will make him incredibly happy. And, you know, this 162 that he just hit in training, is it's a PR for him. It's only six kilos under the world record. And when you look at him and then you look at Shi Ziyong, these guys physically look so different. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe that they even necessarily compete in the same sport. And yet Robo is able to get under such incredible weights. So he just did 162. If he can do 160 at European Championships, which he's clearly capable of doing, uh, I think he's going to really shake up this 73 kilo weight category. Over now to Denmark, and we have Sandra Jensen, 49, 55 kilo weightlifter. She just hit 100 kilos on the jerk. Now, considering that the most we've seen a clean and jerk is 94 kilos from the Qatar Cup 2019, this is enormous. I mean, six kilos over a competition PR, uh, and she did it presumably weighing somewhere between 49 and 55 kilos, which actually is, a, is an enormous jump to make in a weight category. That's that's over 10% of body weight. But even so, she kind of flits between the two because the cut to 49 is so awful. But anyway, a shout out to Sandra for that 100 kilo jerk. The French snatch goat Redon Minouchi, 95.9 kilo Redon Minouchi, hit 185 kilo block snatch. Now, I posted the full training video on YouTube a couple of days ago, which you guys may well have seen at this point. He works up 185 kilos in the block snatch, almost hits 190, almost hits 192, which is remarkable. He could have hit 187 and have had the sort of an unofficial snatch world record, essentially beating Srobs 186. But I didn't mention it on last week's news show because I wanted to save it for that video. But for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll show it to you now. 185, absolutely sensational. He also hit 105 kilos for a, a hip muscle snatch which is actually really impressive. He, he's one of the few people who does muscle snatches uh, correctly. A lot of people, they pull. And I say correctly, there's lots of different ways to do them. This isn't incorrect, but traditionally, the muscle snatch, the elbows aren't allowed to drop. So normally people pull, they turn over, the elbows drop, and then they press out. He just continues. Like His elbows just never stop moving up. It's very impressive. Uh, so 105 for him. He also snatched 160. He had a PR in the front squat at 201. He's just looking great. So... Uh, I highly recommend checking out that video following Red on Minushi, and also if you want to check out the program that took him to this 185 snatch, it is up on the Weightlifting House Patreon page. Over to the UK now, Great Britain, we have Zoe Smith who hit 150 kilos for a set of five in the bat squat. As a 59 kilo weightlifter, what's that, 2.7, something like that, 2.7 times body weight for for a set of five is incredible. Sarah Davies in the heavier 64 kilo weight category doubled 97 kilos on the snatch. That's four kilos under her competition best of 101 kilos, an all-time best actually of 101 kilos from the 2019 British champ slash, it was an international open, a bronze tier qualifying event as well. Uh, and then, and I haven't put it down here, but I definitely remember seeing it. Emily Campbell, also from the UK, from the same gym as Sarah Davies, with a 110 snatch double. I don't know if this is old. I know that she's sort of on her way back, but the video was just posted, so it could well be pretty recent too. Over to Canada now, we have 64 kilo Maud Charon, who we just had on the Weightlifting House podcast. You can check it out. I released it a couple of days ago, and um, and she just hit a bunch of backflips this week. In the podcast, she talked about how she used to do gymnastics, and then she became, she trained for circus performance. So it's a lot of juggling. It's a lot of walking on stilts maybe it was a lot of weird stuff that she had to do but backflips was one of them and uh she still got them so she kind of substituted her her plyometric session i suppose for for backflips so i guess verkashonsky would be would be proud of that one
Over to the USA now, 64 kilo national champion Danielle Gunnan hit 100 kilos in the block snatch. She then hit 100 kilos from the floor, which equals her PR, and she said that she hit this multiple times over the last, I suppose, uh, training program. As far as I could glean from the post, she just quit her job. She became sort of full-time in weightlifting, and my word is it paying off. So uh, very excited to see what happens with her now as she's able to dedicate more time, more training, uh, more recovery time to weightlifting. 76 kilo Kate Nye just hit 138 kilos and 135 kilos in the jerk off blocks RP 7s and 8s which um, is interesting I just think uh, we've spoken a lot about RPE uh, a lot about auto regulation on the weightlifting house podcast with a lot of different coaches and often people have struggled uh, sort of correlating RPE to weightlifting a much more of a skill-based sport rather than just you know, strength work, back squats, pulls, that sort of thing. So interesting to see that she uses that. Don't forget, Kate and I will be talking at the Coaches Only Conference, helping guide coaches sort of through the journey that a coach is going to have to go along with, with their weightlifters as they climb the rankings together. Down south now to Mexico, we have Jorge Cardenas, the 67 slash 73 kilo weightlifter. He just hang snatched 145 kilos for a double. Now, his international competition PR is 142 kilos, so it's more than that. Uh, he did that 142 at the 2019 Pan Am Games. And also, he, he's been competing as a 67 kilo weightlifter for a long time now. He's only competed at 73 once over the last quad properly. So 145 for a double is actually just 10 kilos under the world record for those two reps. And then finally, going even further south now down to Brazil, we have... Fernando Reis, who just posted some pictures or some videos, I should say, of 160 and 170 kilos in a snatch, asking whether they were pow, power, or full. Or I should say power, pow, or full. Now, the 160, I'm calling a power. I think it's pretty clear when you pause the video on that 160 right at the bottom position that his hips are above his knees and his femur is angled up somewhat. The 170 is closer. I'd call it a pow er. So it's a power slash uh. It's it's a power that makes you go, uh, could be a power. I don't know. It's very close. Power, power, I don't know. Comment down below. Fernando, I know you like to watch this show. Hopefully there'll be some results down below for you. A little bit more of an accurate uh, representation of whatever it was. I'm going to say, I feel like if Fernando was, was going for a new record in the power snatch at 170, I would have given it. I think I'd have given it. And that, everybody, is actually the end of this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you guys feel like you understand a little bit more about what is going on with Nijat Rahimov and, of course, Dmitry Kaptari and the ramifications with regards to Lu Jun and Mohamed Ihab and Victor Getz and guys like that. Also, please don't forget that the inaugural Coaches Only Conference, February 27th to 28th. But in the meantime, you can now book a ticket Coaches only on weightliftinghouse.com. The links are everywhere. They're down below. They're all over the place. And of course, if you have work, if you're only able to make one of the days, you can now purchase a ticket for just one of those two days. Oh, and also I needed to mention something with regards to weightlifting bars and plates. Um, things are slow. They have been slow for a long time, but we're about to email all of the people who put their email address into the email bar thing. Uh, on the website to say that they want to know when there are going to be more bars and plates in stock. I suspect that the actual plates and bars won't even be released on the website because the email list is so long at this point that everything is going to get bought up. But we do have more stuff arriving in February, so if you want to make sure that you definitely get some of that, you can also sign your name up, and then when that shipment turns up, we'll let you guys know first, having put your email in, before we make it public on the website. Now it's time for the people's lifts. I've not done a big one. I've only got two people here, actually. I may go through my phone to, to add some more to it, but we'll go through these two. The first is Stephen Fritch. Fritch, yeah, Fritch, on Instagram. At S-F-F-R-I-T-S-C-H. It is not a catchy Instagram handle. I'll give you that. Um, Stephen Fritch, if you're into branding, you've done a terrible job. But you've done a great job in hitting your first ever 300 kilo total. 135 snatch, 167 clean and jerk. Also got a great lockout, just like the guy did last week. So huge shout out to Steven, because that is, that's such a great, I mean, that, that's just a goal that I think a lot of weightlifters have. I never managed to hit the 300 kilo total, though it was a goal of mine as well for a long time. So Steven, incredible work there. And then we have a very biased, but 
wholeheartedly needed post uh, or mention. We have my friend, once again, Bo Brown, aka Bo underscore 89kg, B-E-A-U underscore 89kg. He just hit his first ever 200 kilo clean, which is amazing. I still remember when he first turned up at the training camps a few years ago that we used to hold in Kansas with Glenn Pendley. I remember him cleaning 170, I think a year later, 180 for the first time. He attempted 200 kilos behind the neck in the jerk and almost made it. And now the fact that he's cleaning it and no doubt he'll clean and jerk it at some point in 2021 too is exceedingly exciting. Okay, I'm just going to surf through the, the the people's lift hashtag on Instagram and see what we've got. Okay, the most recent one posted by Dave Esther of Shelby P. Flug, I think. Um, she seems to be hitting 103 kilos for 2 plus 1 off the clean, off the blocks. Wow. 103 kilos, 2 plus 1, clean, BBK, barbell below knee, plus jerk. Uh, oh, and then 112 kilos for the jerk for 3 in the evening. Wow. This is a really amazing lift. And, and that was a power jerk as well. Wow, that was an incredibly solid lift. Huge shout out to Shelby F. Plug. I'm not sure what weight class she is but she's got to be somewhere around the middle weight. That's really impressive. Yeah, great lifting from uh, from Shelby P. Flug on Instagram. Okay, next we have Kanama P. K-A-N-A-M-A-H P. That's a lot of A's. Um, throwback to 2020 when the team was looking good and before a competition season was taken away from us. What would have been a new junior Canadian record at 92 Megan Trupp was in her finest form. Okay, so this lift is of Megan Trupp, Megan T R U P P on Instagram, in the uh, in the Jio weightlifting house T-shirt of all things, snatching 92 kilos and looking very good doing it. That's incredible lifting. Uh, guys, go follow Megan Trupp and Kanama P on Instagram. And then we'll round things off with Umich weightlifting, U M I C H weightlifting. It's called Sunday Stack, and it's just a load of pancakes, and they look very good, covered in blueberries, covered in syrup maybe chocolate pancakes i don't know uh happy recover everyone stay tuned for winter 21 inch gains oh 21 as in the year not 21 inch my bad um i eat pancakes every saturday and sunday and they look very similar to this but they're not chocolate i don't i don't do the chocolate on pancakes i'm not down for that but blueberries and raspberries so uh u-m-i-c-h weightlifting however you pronounce that Yumi weightlifting you mitch you mitch oh it's university of michigan Great. Well, anyway, shout out to the pancakes. Let's wrap that one up there. That was a really weird people's lift. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show. The only weightlifting news show in the world. I'll catch you all next week.